We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Today's question comes from longtime fan of our show and first ever Patreon patron, Brian Kurtz. Brian writes, Hi, Mo, Sean, and Deanna. I've been catching up on a few weeks' worth of episodes and posts that I missed, so games in your show and blog have been on my mind. Nice. I always love reading and listening to the Bellhop. I apologize if my question is something you've already covered in a similar episode and post if I've missed it, but I want to talk space. No, not whether Terraforming Mars or Twilight Imperium is better for a particular group, gaming group. I mean the size of my game closet footprint. I'd like to pick up some games that are new to me, but I want to do so unobtrusively so that I don't have to earmark new space for it. If you had a defined space, say something like 12 inch or 18 inch cube, that you wanted to stay within, what games would earn their place in that limited space? Bonus points if you have some family games, say appropriate for age 10 plus, within your list, as that is a consideration with me. While I wouldn't say money is no object, assume, for the sake of this question, that space is more precious than money. Oh, thanks for the rather interesting question, and of course your longtime support there, Brian. Always great to hear from Brian. Now, I thought this would be a fun thought experience to go through, and I did think of one thing I do want to tweak, though, in Brian's question. So Brian is looking for a 12-inch or 18-inch cube. I have to assume however his closet's organized. He has cubes of two different sizes, which is, is, is a pretty good size to work with. But I thought this question would be more universal and useful to more people if we actually change that amount to be the exact space of one Calyx cube. Now, for those that don't know what I mean by a Calyx cube, Calyx is a style of shelving unit sold by IKEA that features cubes, cube-sized storage spaces arranged in a grid. You can buy a shelving unit of one cube, or you can buy a five cube by five cube big at the biggest and everything in between. You can also just get like rectangular towers as well. And the neat thing about these is they can be stored any way. So you can take like a four long one and put it next to another one, or you can lay it on its side. Now, these are also designed to be able to stack and can be easily added to by just being more cubes. Now, in addition to the cube size storage space, you can also get upgrades like bins that fit into the cubes, doors, glass windows, etc. though most gamers just tend to stick to the basic Calyx. Now, the reason I call out the specific shelving unit that in the last few years, it has become the go-to storage suggestion for tabletop gamers the world over. Every time you see anyone saying, I'm a new gamer and I want a new way to store my shelves, how should I do it? There's gonna be a number of people jumping up to say, you gotta get a Calyx, you gotta go to Ikea. Now, this is for good reasons. First off is price. Ikea makes really solid furniture for a very reasonable price. The second is that your standard board game box, that ticket to ride size box, fits perfectly in a single Calyx cube without rubbing on the edges. Now, most modern board games are about 12 inches wide, but not over 13, and that fits perfect. And that Calyx is 13 by 13 by 15 size without rubbing, plus allowing for deeper, longer boxes that don't stick out the front. So that's the size we're going to work with today. And we do apologize for all those listeners out there who have absolutely no idea what a Calyx is and have never stepped into an Ikea. Yes. Because while many people sort of assume the, the, the concept of Ikea is very universal and everyone knows about Ikea and everyone knows all the memes and tropes about Ikea, there's actually a significant number of places that don't have Ikeas, uh, yeah. even places as big as like Buffalo, New York. Uh, the, the closest Ikea to them is actually by my house in yeah. Hamilton, Ontario. And to be honest, the closest Ikea to me right now is also in Hamilton, Ontario, though we do have a new one coming to Devonshire Mall which I'm hoping is going to be one of the big walkthrough ones. Because what we used to have before was like the mail order, the consumer's version of Ikea, where you could go through and look through a digital catalog and then they'll deliver stuff there and you can pick it up. Which is I'm actually sure how we got ours. nobody listening to this show understands what consumer's distributing is. Oh, come on. There's <laughs> got to be some old ground yards out there that know what consumer's is. Oh. They, they, they bought G.I. Joe's there or Transformers or something. That's, that's where our parents did the, growth, did the, uh, the holiday shopping for the most part, was yeah. consumer's distributing. The first thing I ever bought on my own was from Consumers Distributing, and it was the Mask Condor, which was the green helicopter yeah. flash bike. 
That was the first thing I bought with my own money, my own allowance, and it came from consumers. And consumers is the reason that I knew my postal code back in grade school because you had to fill it out on the forms. So yeah, what I'll do is in the show notes for anyone who doesn't know what it is, uh, I will drop a link to the Calex page on IKEA. And technically before they were the Calex, they were the Expedit. So before it was the Expedit and the Expedit upgraded. So before the Calex, people were like, you gotta buy an Expedit, whatever that is. So what I did was I filled the shelf. We, we own Calex Hughes. Interestingly, we don't keep games in them normally. So the, this is what we per picked up in that short window that you, there was an Ikea pickup store in Windsor. We bought them for the kids' toys. So the kids have a, a playroom, I guess. It's our front room, but it's where, where they spend a lot of time playing with their toys. We bought it to organize their toys and art supplies and other kids' stuff. So what I did was I actually stole my kids, one of my kids' Calyx like shelves. I had them empty it out, and I brought it in here, and we built a shelf of games. So what I stuck with is games I already own because I wanted to be able to try it and fit a shelf. And I think these are all games Brian and his family will love. I did stick to the family-friendly games. So he said, bonus for family-friendly games. Everything on my shelf is family-friendly or plays at least a wide age range. Now, there is one exclusion that I feel I need to mention that I did not fit on my shelf, and that's on purpose, and that is Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. Because anytime anyone says family-friendly game, I can play with it with kids, I think Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. The thing is, I recommended this game to Brian five years ago or whatever, when back on Google Plus, and he went out and bought it then and thanked me for it. And I think that's one of the reasons that he even follows us now is for, for my recommendation of that game. So he already owns that. So he already owns Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. So I did not put that on my list. Fair enough. So here's what I managed to fit. I started with the Quacks of Quedlinburg, the pusher luck bag builder that we just reviewed last week. Everyone in our family loves this game. All the kids were easily able to pick it up. Everyone I've shown this game loves it. Just check out our review last week for more info. Next, I put in Azul Summer Pavilion. Now, this is my personal favorite version of Azul. It is a bit heavier than the original, so you want older kids for this one, right? Like you said, 10 plus, so you're not talking six, seven-year-olds. Um, I personally think Summer Pavilion is going to be more appealing to the gamers, like to Brian himself, the adults playing, and then any other gamers. So I went with that one. Technically, swap that out for your Azul of choice. Next, I have Garinto. Now, we've mentioned this one many times before, and for good reason. This is one of the best abstract games we've ever played. Rules are simple enough. Even kids can get the basics, though strategy might take a bit longer. Next, I've got Gizmos, uh, which for a while we were really talking about, talking up on the show all the time, mainly because we were at the public events and I was really into the game. This is a great gateway engine builder where you're building gizmos for the science fair using a unique marble-based power dispenser system, which kids love playing with the power dispenser. Then I managed to squeeze in space base. While I will say this problem is probably not great for young kids, especially with the charred cubes and some of the interactions. Again, we're talking 10 plus or older, so it's going to depend on your kids and their, and their comfort level. Space base can be great for the whole family as long as they pick it up. The other bonus this one has over the other ones is it does play up to five players with even more if you pick up some of the expansions. This is one of those games that's great for a family because it keeps everyone interested every turn so the younger players don't get bored. Next, I've got Bean. We love Bonanza. We've recommended it a million times. Works great with players of all gaming experience. As Sean talked about before, you can take it as serious as you want, which I think fits great for this game. I've had this one for years, and to be honest, this is probably the oldest game I have that still sees play regularly. It even beats out Catan in this house and Carcassonne. We play Bean way more than either of those, and they're in the same age group. Next, I managed to squeeze in a copy of The Fox in the Forest. This one I threw in there for when there's only two of you and you want to play a game. We love this two-player trick-taking game. As long as the kids or the non-experienced gamers know how trick-taking works, which most people do from playing traditional cards, you're good to go. And if you don't, the rules do explain trick-taking if you don't. And finally, when I was done with everything else, I had this small hole, just the size of a deck of playing cards. Now, my first thought was grab a deck of playing cards and shove it in there, which I think fits. But you know what? I don't think people expect me to recommend playing card games. And plus, you probably got those in a drawer somewhere. You don't need them on your Calyx. So what I grabbed is a game called Cypher. This is one of the love letter clones. I don't know if it's 18 cards, but it's one of those small amount of cards in a cloth bag. That's the name of the game on it. And it's one of my favorite of all the ones I've played. 
It's a cyberpunk themed game where you're playing cards from three different factions vying for control of the Nexus. Fair enough. Uh, I went a little more uh, uh, vague and, 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 and less densely packed, partially because I don't own a Kylax, but I also don't own the vast number of games to Jenga things in. Yes. Uh, and while all of the board game sizes are available on Board Game Geek, it takes a few clicks to get to them mm -hmm. and uh, it, it takes some effort. So what I went with, is all right you want family games well let's see how many of the top family games i can throw into one calax now that's awesome one of them you can't fit in at all because for some reason in the top 10 uh, family games crokinole is right there uh <laughs> and you're not fitting that one into a calax mm -hmm. any way you play but a real fun easy way is wingspan which is you know everyone's favorite uh family game these days Quacks, uh, you know, right along there with uh, the bellhop. Azul, again, I went with the basic, not the not the uh, advanced, but, you know, pick your favorite version of Azul. Uh, Clank, because, well, I love Clank, but it also is one of the top 10 family games. And Lost Ruins of Arnak, which is a bigger one, but fits nicely on the bottom of the uh, of the stack to uh, basically take up all the space you've got. You've got a little bit of room on the top, maybe a little bit of room for some cards on the sides but uh, makes for a nice, neat uh, descending stack of games. That is awesome. I have to commend Sean for that one, putting that one together, looking up the family games and figuring it out. I'm like, I almost figured I was like, I don't know, am I just going to do all the talking? And Sean's like, I don't know, no Calax. <laughs> have fun, Mo. No, this is, it's awesome. I want to see these games in a Calax. So if anyone owns these and has a Calax, take a picture. I was I actually, I, I almost, I almost started Photoshop. opening up Blender. And, yeah. and 3D rendering some game boxes, but I, I, my days are just too busy to actually do. Yeah, it so right so I should have gave you a week's notice, and then Sean would have had it all maxed out and figured <laughs> out mathematically with a spreadsheet, and like here is the maximum number of games you can get in a 13 by 13 by 15 cube. There you go. So once I finished my cube, right, the kids are like, "What are you doing? Why, why why did you move our shelf? Why do you need our shelves?" Right. So they decided they wanted to jump in. And I got to say, they did a pretty good job themselves. So my kids, this is my kids' Calyx cube. So Brian, uh, from my kids to your kids. Um, so the first one they started with was The Little Prince, Rising to the Stars, a card-driven race game with fantastic artwork based on the new Little Prince movie. Fun Fair, a game I totally wanted on my shelf, but oh, good games publishing. It's two millimeters bigger than Gizmos and Garinto and Azul and Space Base. It's just like, oh, it just doesn't fit. So it didn't go on my shelf, so they got to keep that one. So they, they got uh, Fun Fair. Then King Me, which is a gamer's version of Checkers or Drops. Oh, Foxed, a deduction game for kids. Now, this one I tried to talk about because it's really a kid's game. I don't know how much parents would enjoy this one. But it's their shelf, not mine. Then Woodlands, which is a very cool path gate building game that uses transparent overlays to really good effect. And Rhino Hero because, of course, Rhino Hero. And then Star Wars Destiny, which is an interesting way to shelf. So what this is, is this is Gwen's Princess Leia binder that holds her dice and her deck for when we play Star Wars Destiny. So I'm like, that works. And then finally, we have Tales of Equestria, the storytelling game starter set. So I didn't tell them it had to be board games. So they went and grabbed an RPG, which is perfectly cool. Uh, this is a My Little Pony role-playing game that my eldest really digs. Now, technically, they also managed to get Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters in there by having it behind the other games. <laughs> now, personally, I wouldn't have a game on a shelf that I couldn't see and show off. I have to give the girls credit for thinking inside the box, I guess. Fair enough. Now, not to be left out, Deanna also filled a cube. And uh, well, did she ever? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she went with Terraforming Mars. Suburbia, Takanoko, Yardmaster, Raiders of the North Sea, The Crew, Arboretum, Hanabi, Medium, Red Seven, Letter Jam, Fleet, and Codenames Duet. Now, note, she did also use the kids' trick. There are games piled in behind others. She played Tetris here. Yes. Yeah, her and, uh, argument was that it's about space and storage, not about display. And uh, 
They, she also wants to note that the fox in the forest would be in there if Mo wasn't already using it and it would replace Hanabi. Fair enough. So I gotta say, this was way more fun than we thought it would be. Like, I, I feel bad that Sean was left out not owning a Calyx to get to take part in this because it was like, I don't know how many trips. I, I'm sure I hit my step goal today going upstairs and downstairs because I grabbed them on. I'm like, I'm totally doing these. And then I put them in and I'm like, I have all this space on there. There's got to be something thin I can fit. And then I go find something thin. Like at one point I had Car Wars in there because it's a nice thin box. <laughs> and I'm like, I got all this stuff going in there. And then I'm like, wait, what if I turn Quacks this way? And then I'm like, oh, I can now stack all this other stuff and I can get Garinto in. I got to get Garinto in. And the fact that kids were like, can we do it? Like, like can, we, can we build one too? And I'm like, yeah, okay, go ahead. There are four shelves back there. And then once we had the kids doing it, I'm like, Deanna, you want to do a shelf too? And she, she did it. The thing is, Deanna did, did um, family games, right? So these are games we would recommend to Brian. Um, what I want to see is I want to see Deanna's her own. Like here, here's <laughs> my, my, my cube of joy or whatever, right? Like my favorite games. Uh, I want to see some uh, Trajan and um, Thurnan Taxis and stuff stacked in there as tightly as possible. Now, what I want to see is I think this, having thought about it this morning as I was trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do, this would make a fantastic extra life contest at your local FLGS. Mm -hmm. Get a small like four by four or even just a one by one, like a one, uh, one square Calax and allow, and uh, you know, working with your FLGS, of course, allow yeah. gamers to go and grab games off the shelf to fill their Calax in a set amount of time and have competitions. You know, who got the most games in, who got the most value into yep. a Calax, you know, and, and just, you know, how, you know, have a few prizes out there for Calax stuffing. And, uh, Calax you know, stuffing. again, just make sure that your game store is involved and someone's watching to make sure they're not jamming games in there oh, yeah. and, and, and ruining perfectly good new product. Yeah, I'm going to have to think of, like, the shelf stuffer game. The board game shelf, the extra life shelf stuffer. And I'm trying to decide, is it, like, like supermarket grab or smash or whatever? Like, does I, oh, everyone yeah. run at once and they have their own shelves? No, I would say turns? everyone, it has to go one at a time. It's going to get, that. that's how you get damage if you let too many people do yeah, it Yeah, that's once. what I'm thinking. I'm, like, I'm just thinking of the wall of games at the old CG room, which they still have at the new one. Yeah. And having, I don't, a Calax sitting there and having everyone running over and fighting over stuff might be bad. But then I kind of want the who could stuff the shelf first. I, the other option, I think, if you wanted to really do some fun, and I mean, the way you could, you know, if I if I were running a, uh, you know, a TV, a televised version of this, for instance, yeah. you know, a lot, get an actual game show on TV, you don't use the actual boxes. You make well, yeah. your own versions of boxes so that the size is correct. But, uh, and you, you know, you can shove, stuff them with whatever, more cardboard or, you know, inflatable pillows from Amazon or whatever. But uh, you're not actually necessarily using new product, but that takes yeah. a whole bunch of preparation in advance uh, to build. I would still totally games. watch that live stream. Now. That would be an awesome live stream to watch. <laughs> then I think I would do it Supermarket Smash or whatever, right? Like, oh yeah, like yeah, sweet. absolutely. That that would definitely be. And then whoever gets done on time and has the least space left wins the game or something like that. There, there you go. go. Pax has an expedite. That's that's the, that's the precursor to the Calax. Right. All right, so there you have it. What we would fill, what we would each fill, or what my kids would fill a Calyx cube with, game-wise, with an eye towards family-friendly games. Now, what would you put in your cube? Let us know in the comments. Now, let's head over to the lobby and see what they would stuff their shelves with. All right, lobbyists, what have you got for us? So I do have some from our Discord people who uh, we, so if you are a Patreon patron of us, you get access to our private Discord. And one of the things we like to do there is we give everyone homework. So the day before our episode goes live, hopefully I plan that far ahead. Day before our <laughs> if, episode if goes live. If we know that far in advance. Yes. If we know that far in advance, I, I send out homework and I let people know what we're going to talk about and ask them to give us feedback. So what I've got, let's see, we have a four by, so there you go. Jeff Seuss owns a four by four Cubby Calax holding his RPGs. Um, Sean pointed out he could fill two cubes with just Super's book. So that, that's the next step is what, how many cubes does Sean collect? We should make that a contest. We make people bid, like whatever, a $5 entry to, to, to bet on how many Super's RP, how many Calax shells Sean can fill. Um, so Sean said, or Jeff says with board games, Area of Dracula, Concordia, 
Chinatown and Cosmic Encounter. I do question if Concordia actually fits on a Kallax without sticking out. I'm not sure. That's it's a big long box. It may fit. It may be perfect. It might just be 15 deep. But I, I do question that one. The rest I know will definitely fit. And then we have Danielle has pointed out Sagrada, Ex Libris, and quite a few indie RPGs. Totally get that. That's a legit way to fill a cube. Absolutely. And uh, Pax was intrigued by uh, Wingspan being a bigger box, but it's only 11 by 11.56 11 by 11 square with three inch height. Yeah, you've got, to... you've got like almost three inches on this side there, two and a half inches. Yeah. You might be able to fit something else. No, the only one that's actually the standard ticket to side ride. The ticket to side? Wow. <laughs> ticket to side ride? Ticket to side ride. Ticket to ride size on my list is Quacks of Quedlinburg. You can see my shelf is the one directly over my shoulder back there. Quacks is the one standing up. So, yes, that had just, an, like, I don't know. There was, like, probably a full inch if you added up both sides, and that just felt too loose to me, and it felt like I was wasting space. And once I stacked it and put it next to Azul, I was like, oh, yeah. So what I went with is the standard small box size, which is Gizmos, Corinto, Azul. There's, that seems to be, like, the next step down. Uh, what you can can't tell well from that picture is space base is actually even smaller between space base and quacks is where i shoved in cypher you can kind of see the the, the tufts hanging out where you can pull that out so the uh the 2017 third edition of concordia is power grid so it's uh 14.6 inches long which gets you inside the oh, so it does fit okay, so 14.6 cool. by 10.7 by 2.2 that works yeah, that's a standard size box from Rio Grande. Rio Grande mm -hmm. uses that box for Power Grid, Pitch Car, which Pitch Car is not Rio Grande, but it's that size. Um, Power Grid Factory Manager. I own a number of games. Yes, technically I have expansions. Yeah, there, there's. I think that's the only one with the. Let's see. The interesting thing about Board Game Geek, and and it doesn't really help me because I'm not as as knowledgeable as Mo. But when you go to look at the versions and and, and you're getting into that size, before you click, it says. Oh, this is a ticket to ride size. This is a power grid size. This is a there you go. <laughs> and yeah. then you actually have to click to find the actual measurements that uh that I find useful. See, where I was thinking was Amazon. Amazon always gives you the the width like right. whatever it'd be quicker. And they even even show someone holding it. Fair. Yeah, no, I I just went straight to BGG. <laughs> I'm like, go to the versions, find the newest version, yeah, see what the spot size works. is. Alrighty. Yeah, not no no one in the chat seems to actually have have Calaxes that they put games in. So well, and again, this, what I, I mean, do this encourage takes some effort. <laughs> yeah. this what is I encourage people job. to do though is if you want to do this challenge on your own, do it at home. Send us a picture. Um, use hashtag shelf stuffer, and let us see what you were able to fit in one one Calax cube. And then we'll bring them up when we come up the next week. And again, at Mountain Papa saying don't have kids games, family friendly games. Yep. Wasn't looking for kids games, right? And actually, to be honest, this is an older question. And Brian's kids are probably 12 plus at this point. <laughs> so we can probably go a little older. Brian has told me many times, he's like, no rush on my questions. I'm in no rush. And I actually am sitting there currently because we are, we haven't had new questions in a while, working through the oldest stuff in the pile. Like I literally, because uh, I've been busy and things have been going on and now I'm trying to catch up on stuff. I'm like, whatever the first topic is on our list, we're doing it. Again, if you got a game or getting my question to us, Go to tabletopbellhop.com, click on Ask the Bellhop. There's even a spot on the side you can click to, I think, or you can email me, or hit me up on social media, or it ends up if you reply to my newsletter, I will get it that way because that's how we got a question last week. 